Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this thing here. This is an Esheen 250 quadcopter. Uh, it's a, come from banggood.com, so we need to say a very big thank you to those guys. And it's part of a subscriber request. The other part of this that we've done already is we've looked at some very cheap and cheerful FPV goggles. Those are about 66 quid, and they work really nicely. And the subscriber also asked us to see if we can get hold of one of these things, because this is a relatively inexpensive expensive ready to fly FPV quad that also comes in a nice carry case as well. It does come with the battery, with all the different pieces, with props and spares and the gap that's actually there for a radio is um, perfect to actually put those goggles into to carry the whole thing. Now of course the thing that you don't get with this is a radio system so you'd also have to buy yourself a cheap and cheerful radio or if you already have a radio with just the addition of a receiver in here we should have everything that we need to fly. So in this video what we're going to do is have a look at this see what it's actually like we'll then set it up we're not going to go through a lot of detail about the setup it actually uses a cc3d flight controller we have an entire series on the cc3d on how you set it up and configure it what we'll do though is we'll see whether or not it's pre-configured ready to go and if it isn't then we'll flash it with open pilot or libre pilot and then we'll take it out and give it a fly so the first thing we need to talk about then is the main features of this thing. It's a 250 style quad. The frame is very similar to something like a ZMR 250, but it does have these nice sides that are gonna protect all the electronics. Uh, the motor mounts that come with it are 10 degree motor mounts. So it's trying to make out it's, it's built for speed, but we'll see what that's like when we get it flying. There's some really nice touches as well. The stabilization platform for something like a Mobius camera is also attached to the mount for the FPV camera as well. And that's the FPV camera that comes with it. That's a lovely idea. I've not seen that on another model that we've had so far. So that means that as the vibration is flying around the craft, we should have a nice stable image. We'll see what that camera's like when we get it out and try some FPV. A couple of other features. Uh, we have our little full-size CC3D in there. I'm not sure if you can kind of make that out. It actually says CC3D on it. There we go. So that's uh, going to be a nice, easy flight controller to set up. We're going to have to plug a receiver in, and that's fine. We'll, we'll do that uh, in a minute when we've finished having a look at everything. Then we have an FPV transmitter in the back, 32-channel FPV transmitter, and it comes with a little connector for the aerial and the aerial comes in the bag as well now we have a really really thick cables here for this it's an xt60 you also get the battery in the kit i think it's a 1500 milliamp hour 3s pack uh, which is going to be nice and light and should give it uh, quite a decent turn of speed the construction is pretty good the carbon fiber is okay um, the only things that i've kind of spotted on it that I'm not a huge fan of is I think whoever was doing the soldering on these LED pads underneath. So the LEDs, uh, we have red at the back, I think are blue or white at the front, and we'll see that when we power everything up. Um, whoever did the soldering uh, was having a bad day. Um, I might cover those with a blob of uh, hot glue or something else, or we'll see how they work, but I could be tempted to actually redo them because of course carbon fiber is conductive and I want to make sure that these are not touching the carbon fiber because that will conduct a little bit of electricity. The rest of the soldering isn't bad. I think it's just whoever was doing this bit obviously needed a better soldering iron or a little bit more practice. But apart from that, I can't see any anything on here that would give me cause for concern. So let me just pop the top off, and what we'll do is we'll have a little bit of a closer look on the electronics, and then after that, we'll plug it into a PC and just see whether or not it's all configured, ready to go, or we're going to have to set up the CC3D. The top is off, and now we can look inside. Now, there's a couple of extra things that I've done here. I've pulled out all of the cables from the side of the CC3D to plug into the receiver. Um, by default, it's probably going to be using PWM, where you plug these in by one by one. And again, if you're interested in how to set a CC3D up, we're not going to cover it in the video. This is more about reviewing this particular model. You can go and watch the CC3D setup series that will take you through all the steps. 
What I did notice though is the first three wires were not all connected to the first um, three wire connector like we have here. So I've made it like that on ours it goes uh, black, red and then it was white and I've changed it to black, red and blue so it's actually the first three wires coming out of this connector. That means I can use a PPM uh, connection, so a single set of three wires to a receiver, because I'm going to use something like one of those little uh, nano receivers just for simplicity, uh, something like this, and then that way uh, I can just stick it on the outside and that should work fine, because I'm just going to use this as a park flyer. The other thing I've noticed here is that without being able to connect to the flight controller and configure it for the receiver that you're doing and go through your receiver calibration, it's going to be very tricky to fly this. When I took the top off, what I found was that I've also had to remove this piece here. This is where the um, FPV transmitter was. I've had to take this out. Now, it's a simple job of just unplugging a couple of cables and then kind of tugging it because it was held on by this sticky block here. But hopefully you can see that thing there is the USB connector and it's hidden away at the back and it is a devil to get to if you don't take the back of the craft apart. Now that's really really bad bit of design in my humble opinion because you will need access to this as you're playing and changing it and setting it up. Once you've got it all set up you're probably never going to use the USB port again but it's a really important part and with a little bit of thought they could have rotated this board through 90 degrees and presented the USB port here at the side and had these um, the output pins for the PWM motors kind of plugging in here at the front. So um, nice try but unfortunately that for me is, uh, is not brilliant. The other thing that I'm spotting as well, see if the camera catches up, is the soldering on some of this is again not brilliant. Some of it's fine, some of it's absolutely fine, but the, uh, the I think the, the person who did the soldering underneath also soldered these power connections too, um, quite scummy. Uh, the, the connection seems okay, but um, you know when I was learning to solder I would have uh, probably got a clip over the air if I'd have shown that to my instructor. Okay, so now we know that, what we're going to have to do is plug this CC3D in. Now we've actually got the ability to plug a cable in. Now the whole back of the machine's been taken apart. We can now plug in our USB cable and we can plug this into the ground station and start setting it up. I'm actually going to flash this with a LibrePilot and do the configuration. So let's quickly jump on to the netbook. I'm not going to go through the full configuration just because uh, again we've got that covered in the CC3D and the CC3D Revolution series. We'll go through it very quickly. Make a note though I have got all the props off. We haven't got the props on that's going to be spectacularly dangerous. I am going to plug in my receiver and I'm, pr I'm probably going to end up powering it uh, from a little battery while we're doing this as well because I will want to do things like calibrate the motors. Um, that process is absolutely something you need to do uh, to go through so that the motors, ESCs are calibrated, the radios calibrated, your flight modes are set up and it's ready to fly. Just such a shame you have to take so much of the thing apart in order to simply plug in a USB cable that's critical for configuring the model. So let's go to the netbook. Well, first of all, plug the machine in without any main battery power. We're just going to power it from the USB lead that we've now managed to get in the back of the model. So we'll plug it in. The board is going to initialize and come up and then it will reboot and connect. And then we should be able to talk to it using LibrePilot. Now, it's telling us here that the versions mismatch. I've also tried it with OpenPilot and got a similar thing. Looks like it's an OpenPilot version of the firmware. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the vehicle setup wizard anyway and we'll flash the latest version of the firmware onto the flight controller. So again, all this stuff is covered in our CC3D kind of setup stuff. So have a look at the revolution. Very quickly, we're going to click on vehicle setup wizard. Uh, you can't see the next and cancel at the bottom, but I'm going to click next. Yeah. It says remove all propellers. We have. That's very, very sound advice. We're going to upgrade and erase all settings. So it's going to bump the board into bootloader mode. When it comes back up, the little blue light will pulse. And then we're now going to upload the latest and greatest version of the firmware. As soon as it's done that, it'll uh, then take us on to the next screen. 
And there we are, press next to continue. That looks really promising. So it's found that it's a COPS control board. That's exactly what we've got in our machine. That's great, we're gonna click next. It'll reboot it now that the configuration is properly set. It'll take a second or two to do that. Here it comes. And then it's going to ask us what the connection is for the receiver. We're going to use PPM, which is that single three-wire connection. We'll click Next. It's going to reboot again. And then we're going to select that the fact it's on a multi-rotor. We'll click Next. That's the configuration, which it looks like it is from the little bits of wiring that I can see, but we'll test it in a second. Uh, I assume it's rapid ESCs. As it does say in the setup uh, and the pieces on the Banggood site that the ESC support up to 500 hertz update rate, so that's, that's going to do. So we're going to click next again. We're going to calculate what level feels like. So we're going to make sure it's sat on the level surface. Hit calculate. And this is just calibrating the accelerometers. Promising. And now we're going to calibrate the ESCs. Now... This is the bit where you have to make sure you definitely do not have your propellers attached. You have to say that you have read all of these instructions because what it's going to do is going to send all the ESCs a high position pulse and then it's going to immediately stop. So we don't have the battery connected. We're going to click start and now it's going to say plug the battery in, which we're going to do off screen. There we go, and we're going to click stop. Okay, so that should have done it. So now we'll test it. So we'll go to the next screen. We're going to do output calibration. I'm going to click next. Now we're going to uh, do motor one, so the front left motor should be turning it should also be turning clockwise we're going to say start and then we're going to turn this until it just starts to turn so the good news is it's the right motor and it's also spinning the right way that's very promising okay we're going to click next and we're just going to do this for each of the motors in turn Okay, that's really promising. They all seem to be starting about the same time. That looks like the calibration has worked. Now, let me just go back a sec. Uh, the initial tuning, there's loads of different choices that you can have on here. Uh, the default tuning with CC3Ds tends to be pretty fantastic anyway. I'm just going to go for something like a QAV250, um, which is very similar to what we've got here. We'll click Next, and we're going to save that configuration to the board. The board will now reboot, and then we're at the stage where we can do things like the transmitter setup wizard next. So we're not going to go through the transmitter setup wizard. Uh, that's something that is very simplistic, and it walks you through every single step. There's a couple of gotchas, and let me point those out for this model. You can click on the start transmitter setup wizard at any point, but if we just jump into hardware tab, you'll notice that there are a lot of different options for PPM. And again, PPM is what I've uh, picked here because that allows me to do all of my controls over one single three wire cable. But by default, it sets it up as PPM underscore pin eight plus one shot. And that is the way it's configured. Now, that's not a problem. That's fine. It just means that for the wiring, it's slightly different than I expected. So here is the diagram on the screen. What we have to do is we have to connect our receiver up to the ground and plus five volts, which are the first two pins on that connector at the side of the CC3D. And then we connect the very last wire or pin eight, as it's called, in to be the signal pin and if we connect it that way then it'll work fine. If we go back to this then what you do is go back into input once you've made sure you've got your wiring set up and the PPM is set for that as well click on start transmitter setup wizard follow it all the way through and you'll be great. The only other thing you need to be aware of is in arming settings by default it will set to always disarmed which means no matter what you do you will never be able to arm the board to fly which is an interesting safety feature. What I normally do is set this to your right so I can arm the board by holding the throttle stick at the lowest position over to the right hand side. And then click save 
and then you are ready to fly. So now we've done this setup, let's go back onto the desk, uh, put everything back together, put the props on, take it for a test hover, and then we can take it out to the field and see what it's like as an FPV craft. A couple of last things we need to do before we take this into the garden and give it a test hover and then if it passes the test hover then we can take it out of the field and give it a fly. Everything's back together. I've powered it here from a little 3S battery just for the testing on the bench and what we're really interested in here is a couple of things. One, that um, there's no smoke coming out of everything with the main power applied which is good. I did check that there wasn't any short circuits or anything on that dodgy a little bit of soldering underneath and they were all fine. Now before I put these props on, and I have balanced all of these props, and I must admit these props were really good out of the packet. There was only one of them that needed the tiniest little bit of tape, it's one of the red ones, here it is. Um, but apart from that they've all been absolutely superb and these are 5 by 4.5 kind of bullnose props. So we're going to test that this is all going to work, uh, we're going to arm the board and then we are going to uh, fire it up and make sure that all the motors start at the same time. To arm a board like this, as we did it your right, we're going to keep the throttle in the lowest position, press it across to the right hand side, once it's like that it's armed, if I raise the throttle, we can see all the motors are running and they're all starting at exactly the same time. And they are moving in the right direction. If we undo one of the uh, nuts slightly and then power up the motors, the nuts all auto tighten. Fantastic, let me disarm the board. There we go, right. So, now the last thing for us to do then is put the props on. Obviously we're going to make sure that the numbers on the top of the prop are facing up and that we're putting it on the right direction. So this is one that has to go anti-clockwise, so this needs to go on this front motor and its partner in crime in black needs to go with the corresponding motor at the back and so on. So let me put these props on and then let's go into the garden, give it a test hover. If that works, then let's put the FPV goggles on and take it for a fly. The only last thing I'll show you before we start getting out and doing all the flying video is you can see hopefully through that gap that that is the status of the FPV transmitter. Now the way this works is that little box there, which you can just about make out, is a switch. If you poke something plastic through the side you can press it. Press it once briefly, changes the channel. Press and hold it, changes the band. At the moment this is set to F1 which is the default one for all my fat shark stuff. So let me put the props on and then let's go and have a play in the garden. As usual we're going to maiden the craft in the back garden so we'll arm it and then try and take off. Now it's going to have a natural tendency to uh, want to go uh, forwards because we have those raked motors so what I'm doing here as well as just kind of hovering around making sure the controls are all working okay is I'm also using the trim on the radio lots of down elevator so that it hovers with its nose in the air so when I take my hands off the sticks in auto level that it, the attitude it gets in the sky is the one that will have it hovering in one place that took a little bit of uh, playing with there's lots of other ways that you can do that through Libre Pilot and the graphical user interface but this is the way I find it works easiest so now I've got that dialed in as you can see it kind of hovers with its nose stuck up in the air like it smelt something horrible and now I've got that it's a nice craft to fly. A little bit of expo on the aileron and elevator, a touch on the rudder, and it is quite a nippy little beast. It seems to uh, be very responsive and really want to crank over. So this will definitely be a cheap and cheerful little racer if you wanted to use it as such. So now we're happy with this. The only thing I haven't done here is turned on the LED lights at the bottom. Uh, you turn those on using that little switch on the side of the body. I think they're blue at the front and red at the back. When we take it out of the field, I'll turn those on. That will help with orientation for my spotter. And we'll do a little bit of FPV and look at how the camera and video transmitter behave. So, big field time. Let's talk about the stuff that's good on the model. It is nicely made, I like the frame, 
Uh, the motors seem to work really nicely. The props that come with it are really good. I was so impressed that they balanced pretty much straight out the packet. This is designed, I think, to be supplied with a radio where it's all pre-configured for you. So you put your batteries in and you're ready to fly. Now we've looked at a couple of those kind of models on the channel already, and those are pieces of cake to get up and get in the air. This one, because we got this one without the radio, did mean that we had those extra few steps that we had to go through, a little bit of uh, messing about in order to get this flying. It does have LEDs at the bottom. Let me just turn them on here so you can see. Blue at the front, red at the back. Um, they're the ones that the soldering wasn't great, but actually they're working okay. And then the FPV system um, be, seems to work fine. Be aware, of course, that if um, you're in a country that needs 25 milliwatts, you're going to need an attenuator um, plugged into the back here to take that down. And the camera's okay. It works fine. And for a first cheap and cheerful FPV racer craft, that it'll work great. Do you like the fact that you get the battery with it and the charger? The battery is a 1500 milliamp hour, seems to be fine. Uh, this is very much what your racer community would have on something like this, where it's small and lightweight and will just give you enough flight time to complete the race. Personally, I'd probably use something that was slightly bigger. That does lead me on to a couple of things um, about the bad stuff. So USB location, as we've seen on the CC3D, is hidden away in the middle at the back. That is far from ideal if you're going to do what we've done and set it up. It isn't a complete nightmare, and you'll find that some USB cables with shorter connectors will fit in better than the ones we've been using here and I've had to plug this in and out of stuff three or four times as I've been playing with it and uh, you get very used to taking all the screws off, taking the complete top off it, popping the back out in order to plug it in but for a little bit of effort they could have put that on the side it would have been a really nice feature. The soldering, as we've seen, isn't fantastic in a couple of places. It seems to be holding up, but that's one of the things that if you get one, double check and just do a visual inspection that there aren't any dry joints or anything else, because the, the solder and the person doing it on this one, at least, uh, wasn't doing a fantastic job. Be aware the centre of gravity is quite far back. A lot of the weight in this is at the rear of the craft. So if I just unplug this and kind of balance it in the middle, it's balancing okay at the moment, uh, but what I've had to do to get it to balance is I've had to put the battery right up against this camera mount. Now, with um, a Mobius or something on this, it would be absolutely fine. We can move the battery back and it would balance perfectly. So just be aware of that. This frame does seem to be made so that you have to have some kind of action camera at the front in order if you get the center of gravity spot in the middle. The other thing as well that I'm not a fan of is getting access to that little FPV button way down in there so you can change your channels is a bit of a bugger as well. You've got to basically feed something through because this hole at the side isn't big enough to get your finger through. And it's just little things like that that are um, stopping this from being a really, really good craft. Suggestions if you're going to get one, I would think about improving the camera over time. As you get more used to FPV flying, you'll want something that has better dynamic range and lighting response. Um, the connector at the back is, looks pretty standard, so that's an option for you. The other thing I'd suggest is have a look at the CC3D series. We have a video on adding a Bluetooth module. That's probably not a bad idea for this, and that would have saved me a lot of heartache changing some of the settings. If I could plug a Bluetooth module into one of the ports on the CC3D and just kind of Velcro it to the top plate, I'd have been able to do all my uh, changes wirelessly without having to fight with that USB cable. And the last point is, for those little contacts at the bottom where they are covered, because they are kind of putting out main battery voltage, I would put a dab of hot glue or something like a bit of insulation tape over them because Sod's Law says you will be the person that lands on the little bit of conductive material in the grass and something exciting will happen. So in summary, we have looked at lots of these on the channel. This is not a bad one, but it's not the best one that we've seen yet. But the case and the other things make for a nice package. So thank you again to Banggood.com for supplying this. There's a link in the description. And don't forget, we've also reviewed those FPV goggles with this to see if they would work as a set. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. 
Please like, subscribe and happy flying.